What's up, everybody? All right, welcome to the Conflict 494 podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Valona, and today we're going to be talking about Gen Z, specifically Gen Z in the workplace. Now, there's a huge push out there for older generations to conform and connect with the younger generation, specifically Gen Z, in the workplace. The responsibility of baby boomers and Gen Xers to catch up with Gen Z is technologically wise to create a more productive and cohesive workplace environment. But I think it's the other way around. I think Gen Z specifically needs to learn lessons from the older generations and meet them more than halfway in the workforce. An article titled, Experts Say Gen Z Isn't Prepared for the Workplace, But It Isn't All Their Fault, explains that Gen Z is not ready for a workplace environment and that this generation has the highest rates of anxiety and depression. This happened because as play started moving from outdoors to indoors with the invention of technology, kids were constantly supervised by their parents. This led to a loss of autonomy and the kinds of experience kids need to grow and develop emotionally. They further explain that Gen Z has been coddled and that their whole lives have been protected. So when they go out into the real world, there is no more protection. And the demand for autonomy is asked for them. They can't handle it. In the article, they explain the three terrible ideas for raising children that occurred within Gen Z. The first one stating that children and teens' emotions are like the human body's immune system. They need challenge. They need adversity, adversity to develop. The more one overcomes challenges, the one more overcomes adversity, the more confident they will become in facing unexpected hardship and in facing adversity in the future, which prepares them for the real world. Gen Z didn't get to learn that lesson in many cases. This has led business owners, hiring managers, and coworkers of older generations to not understand Gen Z. They don't understand their needs. They don't understand maybe where they're coming from in a lot of situations. And this has le- led to a generational rift in the workplace. This is why I argue that it's not the older generation's job to come down and meet Gen Z and adapt to their needs. That would just further enable Gen Z and worsen the epidemic of depression and anxiety that is already occurring with Gen Z in such high numbers. What Gen Z need is a sort of crash course of challenge and adversity, and seeking it out in the workplace themselves. It doesn't have to be super dramatic. In a Forbes article titled Five Differences Between Marketing to Millennials vs. Gen Z, they explain how the attention span of the average Gen Zer is eight seconds, while millennials and older generations have, you know, 12 second plus attention span. In the workplace, Gen Z is going to want the instant gratification. They're going to want the instant communication without waiting. They're, they want to send an email and expect a response almost immediately, or even foregoing email completely and just wanting to text their coworkers, text their superiors. I say companies and employers and coworkers should push against this. Let them feel the uncomfortability of waiting. Make them push their attention span. Don't give them that instant gratification. In my opinion, that's a good way for most Gen Zers to overcome a little challenge. And things like that, over time, will give these Gen Zers lessons that they didn't get. An article with WorkTech Academy titled Gen Z's Digital Demands, the Ultimate Challenge for the Workplace Tech, they explain that the average Gen Z student switches between tasks every 19 seconds. Every 19 seconds. The average Gen Z student or person changes tasks. And more than 75% of students, Gen Z students' computer windows were open for less than one minute. And they compiled this by uh, using library data at a university. They also explained that Gen Z has a very low tolerance for technological failure or inconvenience. So, if I was an employer hiring a Gen Z applicant, I would purposefully cause some of that inconvenience, knowing it will be a challenge that person has to overcome. If the goal is to keep a long-lasting employee that fits in with the culture of the company, 
that can bring in new and innovative ideas that Gen Z has, but also is able to work effectively with the older generations. Because from baby boomer down to millennial, there's not a whole lot of rift like we're seeing with Gen Z. As I explained before, there's a whole, there's a four second attention span gap. Instant, instant, instant gratification. So by implementing these small challenges, the employer will see, will the employee rise to the challenge or will they leave the company and quit? If done tactfully, I believe that the employees will stay and will be thankful years down the road for the lessons that they've learned. Some examples could be only meeting with a superior face-to-face -face and giving reports that same way. Tell them, don't email me. Come into my office, talk to me face to face. If I'm busy at the moment, then wait. And for Gen Z, that is a sentence that they would dread to hear. Wait. Most don't like it. They can't handle it. As said before, every 19 seconds, they're on to something new. As I said, one of the biggest issues for Gen Z is anxiety, depression, lack of confidence. So for the employer, it is on them, and this is where uh, play devil's advocate, older generations need to come down uh, to, to Gen Z's point of view, is they need to understand how a Gen Z's mind works. Understand uh, who they are, and it's important to teach them responsibility to teach them that adversity is good, that challenge is good, and that with challenge and adversity and failure, these are all things that make one stronger. By doing this, it'll be help them better create a sense of identity, not only with themselves, but with the workplace. In my personal opinion and viewpoint, since an opinion and viewpoint that is held by older generations towards Gen Z is that, I'm a part of Gen Z, is that we are a soft generation. And I agree. I agree. This is a quote I like that goes, hard times create strong men, strong men create good times, good times create, create weak men, and weak men create hard times. I think we're right in the middle there. I think we have had really good times, and we have weak humans. I think we do. I think we have a, and kind of how I explained before, we have human beings that weren't faced with a lot of adversity and challenge, um, that were constantly monitored and weren't given the opportunity to face that adversity and that challenge and that failure and work through that failure and to come out on the other side. As a Gen Zer and, and seeing a lot of my peers, I think it's bad. I don't think it's productive and I think... Uh, that is a huge reason as to why anxiety, depression, self-harm uh, is so prevalent and is we're topping the statistical charts um, and all of those things from my generation. We need to get stronger. We need, we need to cut a link in that quote. We need to be able to create strong men, strong humans in good times. Even if it's artificially, um, artificial adversity, artificial challenge, sports, working out, setting a reading goal, becoming a leader in, in, a, in a group, you know, a youth group, church group, a boys and girls club, taking on extra responsibility and making one's life a little harder will end up benefiting that person tenfold. And Gen Z, I don't think, understands that. And like the article said, it's not all their fault. That is all the time we have today. Thank you for listening. Catch you in the next episode.